YouTube. What is good? It's your boy Q from Next Level Reefing, and I'm back with another video. First and foremost, I'd like to say thank you for all the love and support. I show do appreciate it. And with that being said, make sure you hit that subscribe button and smash that notification bell so you can be notified of every video that I drop, which is every single Friday. All right, so let's dive into it. So in today's episode of the Water Box Dream Tank Build Series, I wanted to go over what I use for my parameter testings. Now, I'm not gonna get into specific instructions on each tool or how to, but if you guys would like for me to do so, I will be able to do that for the next upcoming episodes. So this video is basically just showing you guys how I get the numbers, what the results are going to be, because I haven't even seen what the numbers are going to be. I haven't tested it in like the last few days and also showing you guys what the number results are going to be. And if they are out of whack, getting some feedback from you guys and telling me what you guys think on if the numbers are good, where they should be or what may have you. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here's a quick snapshot of all the materials that I use or products that I use to get my specific parameters. So first and foremost, I am a huge fan of HANA Instruments and their product line. They have definitely changed the game on making it way easier for hobbyists as such as myself to get your numbers and dialing in your numbers and also putting the fun back into the hobby itself. So as you can see, I have the calcium HANA checker. I have the DKH slash alkalinity checker and also have the phosphate checker. Now, unfortunately, as of yet, they don't have a magnesium HANA checker. I don't know what they're waiting on. I've been looking at these guys for years, since 2014, and they have not yet dropped. Now, they dropped a copper, which I'm going to get, but they have not dropped a magnesium HANA instrument checker. So whenever they do, I'm the first on that list to cop that. So for the time being, I have the magnesium test kit by Aqua Forest, and it's kind of similar to the Red Sea magnesium test kit. And to be quite honest with you, I ain't feeling either one of them. They have so many steps that you have to take. And then on top of that, you have to color match. Now, I'm not colorblind by any means, but using these test kits make you feel like you're colorblind. And so because of the complexity of those test kits, I rarely test magnesium. And when I was talking to the LFS, they were basically saying two, for one, not to chase numbers. And then for two, as long as your DKH is dialed in to where you need it to be, everything else will just follow suit. So another great investment that I have is basically what you use to test your salinity, and that's going to be that Milwaukee uh, salinity tester. Now, I'm sure anybody that anybody that's been in this hobby for as long as I have, you started off with that one salinity checker where you have to dump it into the, the water and it has that little spring that shoots up and it shows you what the PPT is gonna be. If I could find a picture of this thing, I'll pop it up right here so I can show you, but anybody knows that's been in the hobby for a minute, everybody has started off with that. You went to your little local pet store, which is, wasn't the LFS, but it was like PetSmart or Petco, and it had like that little salinity checker thing. And like I said, it's like a little plastic and has that little kind of like a pear-shaped little spring inside, and then you dip it in the water and it shows you what your PPT is gonna be. Hated that thing. So then once I got back into the hobby last year, I graduated to the refractometer by Bulkery Supply. And I ain't no spring chicken, so my eyesight ain't as great as what it used to be. And that thing is terrible. First, you gotta find the perfect lighting to go into the, the meter, and then you gotta squint your eyeball into the little scope to see the numbers. And then from that, then you gotta make sure it's dialed in so it's focused, so it has a perfect number so you can see the number. I ain't got time for that. And I told myself when I first saw that Milwaukee test kit, I was going to get it when I had enough bread to get it. Finally, I was going to get it because I'm going to tell you what, it ain't cheap. It definitely ain't cheap, but it's definitely worth the investment. I tell you that and it's not um, disappointed me ever since. So last but certainly not least, the thing that I use to test my pH is also from the brand Milwaukee, and that's going to be the pH Milwaukee tester. And that's going to be that little yellow object that you see to the right in front of the Milwaukee salinity tester. 
So the only downside to that pH uh, tester is that it tells you to keep it lubricated. Now that black, that black bottom uh, little cap, you can keep it liquidated in there. But the problem with that is once you put the tester within that black cap, the water seeps out so it doesn't stay in there that long and you have to keep putting water in there every so often. So I would say that's the only downfall about that. But otherwise, it's pretty accurate at getting your pH number. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and dive into using the products and seeing where the parameters are for the water box dream tank. All right, so the first thing I do is I get two separate measuring cups. One I fill with tank water and the other one I fill with RODI water. All right, so the first parameter that we're gonna to try to get is gonna be salinity. So we're gonna use the Milwaukee salinity uh, tester and then see where the number is for that. All right, so it looks like we're at 34 PPT, which is okay. I usually like to try to keep it at 35, but 34 isn't bad. I, have, I did a water change about a few days ago, so I'm trying to get it back up to the 35. And also with this too, I usually measure twice um, just to make sure that the number says the same uh, continuously. So I do one testing and then I go back and do another testing. So. All right, so next up is phosphate. So we're gonna use the HANA checker to check our phosphates and then stay tuned to see where the numbers are at for that. so the current results for the phosphate for the tank is sitting at a 0 0.02 hmm. that's actually not bad that's actually the lowest that it's been since i've set this tank up so not bad now i would say so as far as all the hand checkers that i have for phosphate even though it's simple and easy it does take the longest the reason being because you have to uh, shake the cylinder for two minutes and then you saw me press and hold the button on the HANA checker itself and that activates the three minute timer so you have to wait an additional three minutes to get the results for the phosphate so it's simple but it just takes a little bit more time so now this is what I do to document all my numbers and parameters for the tank so I have like a little uh, water box diary and I'll put the date time and then each uh, testing parameters I put down. So for example, uh, phosphate, I put FOSS and then I put what the number is for that day. All right, so next up, we're gonna use the HANA checker to check our DKH or alkalinity, whichever you prefer. Now I also wanted to add that I forgot to put into the video. I have a test tube holder to hold all my test tubes and drain them out. And what I also do is I have a Sharpie and I label each tube at the bottom so I know which one is specific because you don't want to uh, contaminate your test kits. 
So to simplify that and make sure that I know what goes to where, I, I use that, so. So uh, with the HANA checker for the DKH, we were having technical difficulties with this. And I was going to do the whole YouTube thing of editing and then show you the actual result. But I was like, you know what? Nobody actually shows you what happens when you have to change the battery. So I figured I'd go ahead and leave this clip in for you guys and actually show you what went down and how to replace a battery and how to put it back in in case it happens to you. So here you go. So it looks like the water box dream tank is sitting at a 9.0 for DKH and that's slightly low for me. I usually like to keep mine at a 9.4 to a 9.6. So I'm definitely going to have to dose uh, within the next couple days. All right, last but not least, we're going to be testing our calcium levels with the HANA checker. So let's see where it's at. Now I would say with the calcium HANA checker, even though again, it's way easier there's just a little bit more steps into the calcium as opposed to the DKH and the phosphate. So the phosphate, even though it's uh, simple, it just has a longer uh, wait time. And then with calcium, again, it's simple, but you just have a little bit more steps in the DKH. so let's see where the numbers is Woo! 
the water box is sitting at a whopping 554 for calcium now this is what i was telling you guys before when i'm doing my uh testing every single time my calcium levels is high where my dkh is low or stagnant so now i purposely didn't do any testings for the last few days or uh, water change so i wanted to catch it on camera so you guys didn't know i was lying about my calcium levels being at a high rate of 500 or higher and like i said in my last uh video i talked to my lfs and he was telling me you know not to worry he saw tanks uh with numbers that high and he said you know some tanks overseas actually have high numbers or there were some tanks have low numbers in other countries so and he told me two things so the first thing he said he said as long as it's consistent in that number then there's nothing to worry about and as long as your uh, corals are doing okay he said there's nothing to worry about the second thing he said is the main thing that you want to focus on is your dkh so he said the one thing that you want to make sure that you keep on lock is your dkh now that's the one that you don't want it to spike up or spike down you want to keep that as consistent as possible but again i love the feedback from you guys so you guys let me know is that too high is that too low is it just on point is my lfs you know blowing smoke or is he pretty accurate on what he's telling me and for me i also don't want to introduce any sps so as i told you guys before if you've been following my um channel that very left pier i wanted to put sps so i kind of want to have a sps on the left in the middle i want to have like a mix lps softies may have you and on the front is going to be straight you feel you so it's going to be uh hammers frog spawns octo spawns torches and up until i get those numbers at least decent i don't want to introduce any difficult or hard to keep um, sps or any other corals that's harder to keep into the tank now the corals are actually doing a lot better than um, a few weeks ago so they're extending out the polyps are extending um, they're eating very well and they're looking a lot better but i'm still a little nervous of introducing anything else to the tank so i'm pretty much laying low for right now and kind of looking into restocking my tank back up with the fish but of course put them in quarantine first of course but as i said before i don't want to introduce any moderate to expert level type corals into the tank until i at least have some sort of um, dial in with the calcium and the dkh all right so there you have it guys those are the current numbers for the water box dream tank um, again, you know, leave comments down below. Let me know what you guys think of those numbers. Like, are they on point or do I need to work at it some more? Or what do you think? I know you're not supposed to chase the numbers, but I know you're at least supposed to have it dialed in to a certain degree. So again, let me know what your feedback is. Once again, I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all. And I'll see you on the next one.